Good evening and welcome to The Walk. I am Vera. I'll be your host this evening and joining me we have Yasmeen Henry, Simone Blackman, and Melita Worrell. Before we get started or before we go any further, we'd like to invite God in our presence. Yasmeen, would you please pray for us? Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for just allowing us all to be gathered here today. I pray that your spirit will be in here as we answer questions and talk about relationships. I pray that you would just give us guidance and pray that we just say the right things and that if you need us to hear something tonight, that you allow it to be heard. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Thank you, Yasmin. The definition of relationship simply states the state of being connected one with another. So when you hear the word relationship, ladies, what do you think about it? Simone? Um, for me, I feel like a relationship is, well, I guess in the dating terms, would be when you have two people that come together that have the same like ideas and values and are both trying to reach for the same goal. So in terms of dating, that's, I think, a relationship. And I feel like for friendships, um, a relationship would be, you know, like someone who you really get along with well. And again, same values and goals is kind of the same thing. Get along. Do you ladies get along well with one another? I, I would say so. Yeah. <laughs> for the most part, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Awkward. For the most part, yeah. Right. That's awesome. We're girls, awesome. so yeah. we're class. Yes. Yeah. Christian, that's an ideal yeah. way of Christian life, right? Mm -hmm. Christian living, getting along one with another. Yeah. But we're going to dig a little bit deeper into this whole thing called relationship. Sometimes in relationships, you think about the way a person was brought up. There are different people that are brought up in different home, different type of home environments. Do you think that has a major impact on the way life is as an adult? I think for myself, I think that is. I wasn't raised with my parents together. They got divorced when I was in middle school or something. So going into a relationship, it's hard for me to know what to look for because I've never seen it in my home. I don't know. Um, I can only from what I see at church or what I see on TV or you know what I see my friends have I know what I don't like from experience but I don't it's hard to know what a good relationship is if you never experienced it at the, at the house okay what about you Simone um I feel like the home life uh the sorry the interactions that you see between um the parents if you have them both at home is definitely a huge factor like I know um, for me, it definitely played a huge role seeing both of my parents, and I know that I love the way that they um, interact with each other, and that's what I want for um, my own marriage. So I feel like it can play a big factor, but I feel like it's not the end all be all. Like if you're if you're being raised in a home where it's not the best situation, like Mickey said, like if you go off of what you don't want, like you don't have to continue down the same path. You can do the opposite of what you've seen. So it's definitely not the end all be all, but I know for me personally, it is definitely something that I do want um, for my own marriage. So. Okay, I like that. Yes, me, what about you? Um, my parents, they were together, but they weren't supposed to be together. So I saw like the effects of that, like always like constantly arguing and just, you know, so I do believe that it does bring like a, the into your relationship, it does bring a huge effect, like how you were raised into your household, because I could see from even like myself, like I do tend to argue a lot, not because I feel, not even because the conversation is supposed to be argumentative, it just comes out that way. So I can see the effects that it had on me already. Okay, so you think that some of that is learned behavior? Oh yeah, definitely. Most things that you like portray off in relationships, you had to learn from either watching or even hearing what your friends are doing, seeing what is happening around you. And, so. That's true. and I've read like several times and in many places that it says like what is in your mind kind of controls when it comes to surface. Because a lot of times it may be a not so good relationship and you're so focused on that relationship not being so good that you stop and you forget about what can be good. Yeah. So you may have a tendency to enter into a relationship 
with those same types of values because you were so consumed with it that your mind was not free, freely open to receive something different. What do you guys have to say about that? Do you believe that to be true? Yeah, I think that's true. <laughs> so you're saying like basically what you like hear or what you're trying to in, in um <laughs> what you're trying to get away from for lack of better words, is actually what you're running into. Like a lot of times we may mm -hmm. see things what our parents are doing and mm -hmm. you say, okay, this is not what I want, but you end up down that same route. I think mm -hmm. that's because you're like subconsciously, you're like used to it. Right. So even though you don't want it to happen, when it does happen, it's like, okay, maybe this is okay just because that's what you've always seen in your life. Yeah, I okay. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking, if you're just joining us, we're talking about relationships. So these ladies are sharing their views on it. We're talking about how, you know, family life uh, could affect your way of, the way you're being brought up, how it affects your life as an adult. Mm -hmm. Simone, I'm sorry. Yes, it's okay. Um, so what I was saying was, I feel like there's a lot of times, like, I know my mom sometimes can be very, like, strong strong uh <laughs> like, 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 strong yeah will. like strong and strong will like very strong so and that that can be a good and a bad thing so i feel like there's a lot of times like i know for myself like i can get a little crazy like if i let myself <laughs> yeah, and, like, I, can, I can get a little crazy <laughs> and like i recognize that in myself but like you try i try to turn away from it like like you're saying but it's like in the heat of the moment, or like if you're like having a strong discussion with your partner, like, or just with anyone, like it can come out just that quick, despite the fact that like, I recognize it, I know that I do it, but, and no matter how much I want to try to stop it, it's so much a part of me right. that like, it just comes out. But then again, that is something, and that is the reason why we have to pray about these things, like, it will never go away naturally by ourselves, like just because we want it to, but because it is so deeply ingrained in us, it's literally only prayer that will help. Yeah, get you like, through yeah, it. like yeah, like literally, you because without yeah. it. Prayer, that's an awesome, awesome point you brought up. Yeah. Prayer and also surrounding yourself with positive people, yeah. with like minded people. Yeah, because if true. you're surrounding yourself with people that are in negative environments and continue to do those negative things, yeah. you may have a tendency to just continue to follow along because it mm -hmm. becomes normal. Yeah. Right? So there could be people that grow up in the same type of home, same mother, same father. You know, a father could have been an alcoholic or, you know, whatever the case is. One child turns out one way and another child turns out takes a totally different path. Yeah. So it definitely can happen. So although you're in, say, a broken relationship or, you know, you see not so positive things in your life, it can take a turn. Yeah. Now, speaking on, again, our topic, relationships, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we want to hear from you. Oh so just, you know, share this information with your friends. Call your friends up, let them log on. We want to hear from you what you think about relationships. Now, I want to find out from these lovely ladies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need for you to stop and think about the, the relationships you saw growing up as a child mm -hmm. and what you want for yourself in a relationship. Mm -hmm. I'd like for you to list at least three things that you would like to see in a mate, a potential mate for yourself. Mm -hmm. um. Well, definitely, I would want someone that is, like, God-fearing, like, just really all in it for God. Um, also, just someone who's very respectful. <laughs> someone who's also very respectful. Talk to him. He's right there. He's <laughs> out there somewhere. Out there there. Yes. Uh -huh. Someone who's just really respectful, respects me, like, my body, my thoughts, my everything. And just someone who can event, like, I guess someone who has, like, goals for themselves also, because I don't want to be with someone who doesn't potentially, like, know what they're going to do with their life. Like, even, it doesn't even have to be, like, career-wise, just like, oh, uh, what are your, what are your, like, short-term short -term goals, what are your long-term goals? You just need to have some type of goals, because... Definitely, it would not be able to work. 
If you have goals and you respect women's bodies, I need you to type in and let us know what you have to say. Simone. Oh, oh, yes. Okay. Are we done with the G? Oh, sorry. Um, so for me, I'm very affectionate and I feel like that is a very important thing for me. It's also like one of my top love languages. Like I love uh, physical touch and that's what I give to the people that I love. So that is definitely that I um, need in a relationship. Um, another thing would be loyalty. I'm very big on loyalty and like having my back when like the chips are down. I'm also like very emotional. So like I also feel like loyalty goes into like if, I need I need you to be there to turn to if you know what I'm saying right. like no matter what comes like you need to have my back always be there for me like that feel like that's extremely important and um, I think another thing also like what yeah I said respect like that is so huge like respect and trust like those I don't know if I could combine two or three but like literally. To know that someone respects you, respects you for who you are, doesn't want to change you, like truly enjoys you for you, like respects, like she said, like your mind, your body, like my emotions, like everything. You, you respect that, like that is so huge and I feel like that's so important. And yeah, that's my top three, four, eight, 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 eight nine, seven. <laughs> um, for me, it would be... Um, like Yasmin said first, um, uh, Christian, godly relationship. I feel I've dated ungodly people. <laughs> and I feel like it brings me back, like, okay, I need to, that's the number one. And the second one is to have the same mindset, the same Christian mindset. I've met people that I was not, we did not have the same Christian mindset. They'll say they're Christians, but their values were different. Um, and a sense of humor. I think I'm, I like to have fun and be goofy, and I think that is a good factor for me. Oh, very nice, very nice. So, you ladies mentioned about a godly person, a God-fearing person. Explain to our audience exactly what you're talking about, just in case we have a couple of people that, you know, needs a little bit of clarification on that. From your perspective, what do you see that as? Because it could be different for someone else. Um, for me, I would think a godly man would be someone who puts nothing above God, someone that uh, that's their top, that's their top priority is their relationship with God. Before their mom, before their dad, before their friends, God is their first priority. And that is like a good, that's what I like. And that's what I want for myself. I know I want to be that godly woman. I want to put God on top of everything that I have on top of school and work and all that. So I would like someone the same as well. Okay. Mine would be like showing love like God. So even like, well, I guess like in the marriage state, once he gets in marriage, like no matter like what's going on, like you can still be able to forgive that person and be able to just purely love them for who they are. That's what I guess. That's what I'm trying to say. I feel like same thing as well. And also um, the value. So I feel like with God fearing, like that's some, okay. So God fearing, like you have these values that are attached to it, obviously, which would be like um, praying, like constantly going to church, like being involved in church. Like there's so many different things. I know that's not all that encompasses God fearing, but I feel like those are also like mm -hmm. big parts. Like, I don't want to raise any children in a home where we're divided or where, you know, my values are this, but your mm -hmm. values are that. Like, it literally needs to be a consistent home front. And I feel like that is something that God wants for all um, families mm -hmm. and relationships for us all to be on the um, same page. Also, do not forget to share this video with your friends in terms of us all being on the same page like we all want to hear what you guys have to say so definitely share it and comment because we care um 
But yeah, so I feel like that's that's what I think. Okay. I like that. Okay, so you mentioned Simone. What if you had a situation where a young man approached you, very affectionate, just what you like, you know, believes in God, prays with you, and everything, but he's like, I don't want to be confined to this building you guys call church. Do you think that's going to have an effect on your relationship? Would you be able to proceed in that relationship with this person, that connect, would you, do you think you'll be able to have that connection with that person? I feel like for me, that would be very difficult because I, I enjoy being around people. I am, I truly enjoy my church family. So to know that there's someone who doesn't want to go to church mm -hmm. or who, who doesn't want to like Experience fellowship with, with people that are the same, like it is so awesome when you could be in a room with every, all of us think the same. We all, well, Yep. <laughs> you know, saying, like, you right. know like, oh, that's the case, but I'm hoping that's the case where, but like, where we're all like on the same page. We all, you know, what I'm saying, like, mm -hmm. I can turn to you because you yeah. understand. Like, even if we struggle in like our daily, like, worldly lives, like, to know that I have Mickey that I can call on, who will understand my worldly struggles, but give me Christian advice, or like, yeah. I would have never met Mickey if I didn't go to church. So like, I. I've never met, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. you would have never met these people that could uplift you in the end if you are going through something. So, I feel like to have someone who isn't interested or, you know, doesn't want to be confined to church, like, that wouldn't... Might not work. Yeah, that, like, it just is not yeah, possible for difficult. me. Like, yeah. I enjoy being active in church, so, yeah. Okay. So, again, if you're just joining us, we are here <laughs> discussing on the walk topic of relationship. Now, I would like to know, um, so we talked about what can draw you away, and you ladies also, you mentioned the three things that, three top, some of us four, <laughs> top things that you <laughs> like, <laughs> six or seven or eight, yeah. that you like in a relate that you can see, with, that you would like to see in a potential mate. Now I need you to stop and think for a moment and share with us at least two things that's definitely, absolutely, I can't go there. Like, it's off limits because, yeah, this is what I don't want in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me, you know, two things? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> two things, absolutely not. Well, I don't know if it's like extreme things or like little Look, things. This is Anything. your thing. It's not for the whole Anything. world. This is Yasmin. I cannot. If you're out there watching, she cannot. Absolutely cannot. I Hang cannot. I don't know. Just like basically like just out like outright like disrespect. Like just, in what way? Elaborate for me. Well, elaborate. like how I was saying, like I want someone who like respects like my emotions, like my thoughts, like not like um <laughs> how am I gonna say this really? I need to say it in a way that is not We are all real. Say it in a way that we can understand. <laughs> Plain and simple. Just like basically disrespecting how I feel. Like if I'm like, oh, like I feel this way about something, don't mm -hmm. be like, no, like you can't feel this way about something. Like you have to feel this <laughs> way right. about something. Okay. Like, no, no yeah. like I don't, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> the next one. Well, what if he adds on to that? Like, okay, that's how you feel, but the spirit is telling me that yes, oh. you don't have to feel this way. Okay, uh -uh. if it's mm -hmm. coming, like I, if it's coming from like a truly godly place, then you know you have to like take it into consideration. But if you don't feel, I don't even know if it's like if if you don't even feel it. Like I don't know. Sometimes you just get the vibes like you know it's real. Like they truly care. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just like you know they just are saying this just because they want this to happen. Yeah. Okay, so that's your number one. No, sorry. <laughs> number two. My number two would probably. I feel like that's just like my major one. Like everything okay. else is. She's like, okay. Yeah, like that's really. Just don't tell Yasmin what to do. But see, it's not even like. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to not make. I can't do that. So. <laughs> Sometimes you can't like say, oh, basically, I don't even know where my thoughts are right now because that this messed me up. Well, you're gonna, you're. This is what you're gonna say. Yeah. So how you're saying like, oh, like it's not even a way 
that I just don't want them to like control my thoughts or stuff like that. Like it's not about being controlled. It's just about like respecting both sides. Like I listen to you, you listen to me, but not say like, oh, you're wrong, and not even take like my side into consideration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right again, ladies and gentlemen, we definitely want to hear from you. You're hearing from these ladies what they don't want in a relationship. <laughs> Let me know what's an icebreaker for you. An absolute no-go. All right, back to you, oh, ladies. We have some comments. Oh, comments. I love it. So Gavin wrote, he's like, I don't know if I should read both, but I will. Okay, he wrote, a godly partner would be one that is equal, so this is like before, mm -hmm. a godly partner would be one that is equally yoked. They are on the same spiritual level, but striving upwards. Then his next comment was, I don't think we can strive to find a partner who is perfect, quote unquote, Christian, a perfect Christian, while we ourselves are content with being imperfect, mm -hmm. equally yoked and willing to grow is important. Then Brianna says, I agree with Gavin. We are all on the same journey to have a closer relationship with Christ. So it, it is important that we find someone with that same drive and whose value and morals coincide with yours. Yes. And so that goes yeah. back to what we were saying about surrounding yourself with like-minded pe uh, people. Thank you, Gavin. Thank you, Brianna. That is exactly what we need to hear. Awesome. Simone. All right, so top two things that we yes. do not Or you can do three since he hasn't been did one. one. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> uh, that was just like a major yes. one. Yes, yes. I think for me, um, like lying. So I'm That's a big like... <laughs> Okay, so mm. the way that I am, okay, so in the past, I've been lied to a lot, so whenever people say things to me, I tend to question it, uh, I, I'm going to question you about 10 times before I accept your answer, just because I'm weary, because I've been lied to so much, so it's like, for me, if you lie, that is so big, because most of the times, I feel like I can be very, like, gullible, like, I most times I tend to believe people. Well, back then, I used to believe people like very easily, like whatever you said, I'd be like, okay, all right, fine. But then like, once I realized like, okay, those were all lies, now I'm like so weary and I hate that about myself that I have to like question someone so many times mm -hmm. just to be sure that you're, you know, that, that you're telling the truth. So I feel like lying is uh, definitely one. And um, number, to what again I guess not being on the same page so not being on the same page for me can be a lot so like whereas I'm affectionate if you're not willing to give me affection that's not gonna cut it if I like to I like to go out and eat and experience new foods if that's not what you want to do that's not like <laughs> I like to travel like I feel like it's important to be with someone who wants to do the same things that you want to do like if you're with someone who doesn't want to do those things, then that's when you start changing yourself <clears throat> to fit this person because they don't like, then you end up losing yourself at the end. And I feel like that's not what I want. Surely what God wants. And if that's what you want, you have to look. Okay, so, two, <laughs> so two things. You talked about liking to go out and eat different things. But the whole um, trying different foods and all that. If this person that you're trying to be with, how important is compromising? Mm. Right? So if yeah. this person okay. is not a person, like they have all the other qualities that mm -hmm. you like, your top eight that you listed earlier, if you were listening, <laughs> the top eight that you listed earlier, um, if they have all these qualities, but they're not willing to go out and explore these new foods, would you be willing to try those at home? Have them to cook these different foods. You can do that stuff together. Is that something that you're willing to compromise in a relationship? That, I feel like that is compromisable like if you're talking about like trying new foods that we can compromise like yeah we can cook that at home but in terms of like travel i enjoy traveling we can't travel i can't TV. travel by myself <laughs> like i can't just watch people like watch other people travel like i want to be out there too but then i know like for my mom she likes to travel my dad doesn't so she travels like with her friends yes. and leaves mm -hmm. him at home and mm -hmm. he enjoys staying home so i feel like that is one compromise that she she made, but I'm not sure if that's a compromise that You're I would want to make. Like, I like going places with the person I love. I don't want to leave you home and I'm just with my friends. And there's nothing wrong with going out with friends. I love my friends, like, but sometimes... But you can't cuddle with your friends. Yeah, like, you can't be a, you can. a affectionate <laughs> with your friends. <laughs> that's not <laughs> <That's not laughs> <laughs> Well, huh? Okay. 
So, you got something to say, Yasmin? Oh yeah, so we can read Sandri's comments about his lying, um, his point of view on lying. He wrote lying is Sanjay. Sanjay, okay, thank you. He wrote that lying creates a fault lying creates a faulty foundation and works to demolish even the strongest relationships. Yeah. I agree. Absolutely one hundred percent. True. The truth shall set you free. And I feel like you should <laughs> definitely, you know, be honest in everything and with every you know, as in a relationship, definitely. Mm -hmm. Back to you, Simone, before we move mm -hmm. on to you, Malika. You talked about um, asking a question over and over again mm -hmm. as far as trust mm -hmm. because you don't like to be lied to. Yeah. But going into a relationship, is this something that you speak to that person about in advance? Because to me that can come across as being, um, well, a lack of trust. Mm -hmm. And it's not fair to the other person that you're going in with this baggage yeah. of not trusting without even giving them an opportunity. Mm -hmm. yeah. So is that something that you discuss, or do you think that's important to discuss that before you enter into a relationship? Um, I feel like, okay, so, how do I answer this? I feel like it is important to discuss. Is it something that I initially discussed? No. But is it something that has come up? Yes. So, um, In an argumentative maybe, type of way? No, or? no, no, like, okay. just like, oh, I've noticed this. Okay. So, um, once that was, Posed, like in the discussion I definitely opened up and let him know like all right this is the, my reasoning why like this is why and um, I'm not sure if it was something like oh hi my name is Simone I question a lot because I don't trust people like so that's not something that I would like you know like initially yeah, start with you know what I'm saying but um, it is something that like should be if possible should be discussed prior just so that they're aware like and um, I, I also I try not to, and it's something I'm definitely working on. Like me and Jesus are really going at this because it is something that I do a lot. Like even with my friends, like I'm gonna question you to make sure that you're mm -hmm. being honest. So it is something that, like I said, like only with prayer and because it is something that's happened to me, and it's hard to leave that baggage behind when it was all you knew at one point. Like if all you knew was someone lying to you, then it gets hard to kind of like transition into, I guess, a, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like so as a result that. of that, do you find it um, that it's, that you have a tendency to lie to others as well? Or you try not to? No, I don't think, I don't think I have a tendency to lie to others due to that. I feel but you like do at times. What, lie to people? Yes. About what? <laughs> like in regards to anything well, we're talking about well, being honest, <laughs> you're saying you're talking about being truthful, yeah. then you yourself should exemplify these types of behaviors, right? Being truthful? Well, yeah, yes. everyone strives to always tell the truth. <laughs> but everyone. like, no, that's not true. That's true. Not everyone. But like, there may be times where I'm like, oh, the phone is breaking up. Uh, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, call I'll call you back and, and I'm never, never going to call you back. Oh. So there may be like lies like that, but nothing like when, when I'm talking about like lying, it's in like, a relationship. May, like if I'm with you, there is no reason why you should be lying to me about little you know things. what I'm saying? Like little, little crazy what? things. Ladies and gentlemen, did you hear what she just oh said? Oh my gosh, shut like that. No, no, no. Okay. But we're talking about the little things. That's a little thing. Mm -hmm. Just like Sanjay stated earlier about the foundation being broken. To me, if someone can lie about something simple, then I feel yeah. like, you know, bigger things are things that they're going to lie about. I'm not saying, again, like that. I quoted yeah. earlier, we are not perfect. None mm -hmm. of us are. Mm -hmm. But if you struggle with something that if that's something that's so important to you as a lie, then you should try everything within your being and with God's help sure. to not do it because mm -hmm. you yourself don't want to get caught mm -hmm. in that type of like, okay, but you lied about this. Mm -hmm. Okay, but my lie was little, but your lie is big. Mm -hmm. Sin is sin, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But true. I'm not going to go too far into that because I want to hear Melita. We want to go back to your top two before we go into more comments. Um, I think that number one for me is not having the same mindset. For example, I'm gonna get a little personal. <laughs> so I think that like from some terrible people that I've talked to or showed interest in me, um, had a problem with me being celibate. 
And I feel that like I, the moment that you have a problem with me being celibate or you're not celibate, then I I, I knock that off. Like we, we clearly aren't for each other. Right. I think that's like my number one. Mm -hmm. And the second one would be um, lack of communication. Mm -hmm. I, feel, I like to talk. Yeah. I like to text. I like to talk to you a lot. <laughs> not yeah. or so you're not, not like to the whole my like phone this. is breaking up, I'll call you back. That's no, we're gonna talk through this broken up. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> just, 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 like tell me why I will not FaceTime. No, no, not that not I'm not I'm not psychotic. Right. But I feel like communication is like key for me. Um like I remember like when I was younger I would have been in like in a relationship. Homie wouldn't call me for five days. That's not going to work out for me. And then that's where the trust issue that I'm not trusting you. And then all sorts of stuff happens. Maybe that's why I'm still single. But I definitely think that, like, those are my two. You have to have the same mindset um, like me. And uh, communication. I think communication is key. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, comment. Please comment. I would like to hear from you because I'm going to ask these ladies. What is an acceptable amount of time if you're in a dating relationship of someone to call you back like okay I'm gonna call you back you don't hear from him in two hours or two days or two weeks what is your cutoff on that point? Simone? I did not hear you at all. Oh. Okay. I apologize. Ladies and gentlemen you heard me. Can you please comment on that? My question is if you're in a relationship or mm -hmm. getting to know someone what is your acceptable, you, mm -hmm. your acceptable amount of time for that person to return a phone call to you before you start like blowing up his phone? <laughs> I, over I to call and he doesn't respond. Right. What's the acceptable time? By like the end of the day. Mm. That's a long time. A, it depends. It depends on the time. It depends on who it is, honestly. Like, no, no this is your, my This is your, your, he well, got your, your well, top well, three. Well, <laughs> wait, hold on. <laughs> like, he, he has your top eight, your top three, right? It's all up there. You're in this relationship. You guys are seeing each crazy. other. And I'm like, okay. Because you guys are already boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. Boy, let's go boyfriend and girlfriend. Yes. Okay. So, like, how it long depends. have you been talking to <laughs> So, like, I, like, if you're at work, obviously, I don't expect you to, yeah. like, well, one, I'm not probably not going to call you when you're at work. But, like, if I know you're not at work and, like, I call you and you don't, like, call me back or text me back. It I don't know. It depends. Because sometimes I know, like, maybe he's playing basketball. Or maybe he's at the gym. Like, I'm not going to get crazy, like, right off like right off the bat. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm going to give you a couple hours. Like, <laughs> two hours. Oh, no, like, two oh, hours. I did like that. I'm going to give you oh. to be crazier. No. <laughs> 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 Send a text or whatever. But I want to know, like, how many, how long do you let two hours go by? Do you let two days go by? We're definitely not going to wait five days, right, Mickey? We're not going to wait five days. That's unacceptable. No. So I would like to hear from you. Okay. So my friend Jeffrey, he said no less than three days. But I guess he's, like, staying for, like, if you weren't in a relationship. But then he said, oh, if you're already dating, then call back within a day because he's working out or he's with his friends. Yeah. But if day, you're with your friends, you like, can text and be like, that's okay, my whole thing. Like, I'm busy. Balance. If back. you don't know how to balance your friends and your relationship, then you can have your friends because mm -hmm. that's... So you point. all agree that a day is too long. Yeah. 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 I, because I because it. it only <laughs> takes it. but 30 seconds for you to text and be like, hey, Even I'm busy. I will seconds. call you yeah. back. Like, yeah. It, so hey, that okay. is my whole thing. thing. I'll right. talk to like, you in a I like updates. So if yeah. you're like doing something, like, hey, I'm doing this, not like checking in, but just like letting <laughs> me know, know what's going <laughs> <a little bit. laughs> Like I'm gonna try to make it sound better because I just like to know like what's going on. I don't like to be like left like, like second clueless. guessing. Oh, like, like hey, where are they? Um, I don't. I, don't know. I just saw them over there. Oh, I was like, my God. <laughs> yeah, like is, I don't know. That so. is the number one thing that I can't stand. It's like you. <laughs> so it's like if you. What did you just say? Cause that's just, what did you say? Oh, like just you let just me saw know. Them over there. Yeah. Them. So I was like, I hate not being in the know. Like, 
you don't got to tell me everything you're doing. But, but some, it looks yeah. bad when someone's like, oh, where's your boyfriend? And you're like, uh, I don't know. I don't but know. then this person's like, oh, okay, wait, tell me. Yes. Where, and now you look crazy, like, because you don't know where your man at, but everybody else knows where your man at. So it's like, it looks bad yeah, yeah. on you. Like, why don't you know where you're... Again, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> just joining us, we are talking about relationship, different aspects of relationship. So we talked about, you know, what's acceptable time. We also want to know, we're taking questions from you regarding relationships. So if you have questions for us or anyone here on the panel, Yasmin, Simone, or Melita, please text it or even myself. Text in, let us know. I want to read a comment really yeah. quick. So Zania, she wrote, she's like, if I've been with this person a while and we know each other's schedule, if I expect that you're somewhere and I can't reach you, I would start to worry. Yes. It's his job to let me know what's up. And I do agree with that yeah, because you, you can't let someone like that you say you care about and love, like just worry, just about, worry about what's where your whereabouts are. So. Now, there are some that are just like over the top. Before I got married, this was like before. If you're listening out there, <laughs> this guy was talking to, and it was like early in the relationship. Like this guy, he was over the top informing you, and I don't know if any. It was it was a bit much. It's like oh, like how I'm much here. is too much? Right, how much is too much? This was too much because it's like okay, yeah, I'm just getting off from work now. You know, I'm gonna go get in my car. I'm gonna drive home, and I'm gonna take my shower, and I'm like. Okay, like, that's a bit too much. So there are some. No, yes. no, no. Yes. no, I was not dating Carlos, guys. I was not Carlos, because it's like that, but no, it was not him. But there are some people like that that will give you step by step. It's like, oh my goodness, that's a bit too much. Meanwhile, so, we're in the corner like, how yeah. 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 Like, No, initially it was like, oh, my mom always tell me it's fine, but then after a while I'm like, too much, I think too I much. was just calling to say, hey, for like two minutes, this is now 20 minutes later, don't play by play. It's too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do you think is too much for you ladies? What is too much? Or you don't have a too much. You love that kind of stuff. Oh, they love no. that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's okay. I agree. No, that is like too much, but I don't know if it's like too, too, too much. <laughs> like, I don't want to know. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I pass. So again, <laughs> if you have her top three, one of she needs to know where you're at at all times in this relationship, please to let her know. Do we have any comments from our listeners out there? Oh, Phaedra wrote, she said the courteous thing to do is take a moment and text back to let the other person know that you are okay. Mm -hmm. and what if they're driving? Um, I don't know. Some people don't text and drive, but I do, Voice so I will text you. Like, okay. Oh, well, that's not good. <laughs> so then again, that goes, that, that again goes with, <laughs> that also goes hand in hand with knowing the person that you're in a relationship with. So mm -hmm. all of these things are things that you should definitely discuss early on in a relationship. What actually bothers you? Like, yeah. listen, if we're out, you know, if I haven't seen or heard from you and I'm calling you, just let me know. Answer your phone. Send me a text. I think that kind of stuff on the upfront will eliminate a lot of issues throughout the relationship towards the end, right? Yeah. So um, there are six marks. We got this information from Crosswalk Ministries, uh, and it's talking about six marks of a healthy relationship. And the first one, Simone, you would love this one. <laughs> first on their list is affection. Yeah. So, <laughs> She is not alone in this one. And I, you know, there's a lot of people out there that loves that, mm -hmm. you know. The second one they had on there, I think we all would agree. Yes, me. Respect is what they had on their list. And I don't know if it's necessarily in any particular, they just had it. I don't think it's, you know, prioritized in any particular way. I'm just, then they talked about shared values. One of these, you ladies mentioned that. I think it was Simone on that one. And Nikki also mentioned that as well. Hmm. Honesty. <laughs> Wonder which one? Which one of our ladies uh, uh, mentioned anything you? about honesty? Who was, was that me? one? It was Simone. Of course, it was Simone. Hello, it was Simone. Like, yes, yes, very good. It has on. They even went a little bit further to put on put on there that dishonesty is like poison in a relationship. So mm -hmm. Sanjay, yeah, that's so that yeah, poison. Yeah. You know, that breaking down the foundation, foundation yeah. in their relationship. So just think about it like that. Whether little. Simone, or 
big. A lie is a lie is a lie. Right? Okay. Then they have on their trust. And yes, mean again, you're up there. Have you? Is this? I read did you write this? Oh. So, <laughs> is this right? No, I'm just joking. That is the idea. Number remember. six that they have on the list is the freedom to be. So, this is Yasmin. Don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me how to think. Respect <laughs> me and what I believe. So, ladies, mm -hmm. what do you have to share about these? How do you feel knowing that? Somewhere out there, there's a list that's posted with things that you actually have on your top three list of things as well. I feel like this only kind of solidifies our, um, I guess, our point in what a good, healthy relationship is. Like, if this is on someone's list from the internet, and it's literally, we each said something of that nature, that means that these are definitely very important qualities that we should if we're not there yet that we should all strive for mm -hmm. um just to be more like jesus like i don't mm -hmm. think jesus walking around lying like so i feel like if we are striving to be like god and do godly things and grow closer to him um these six qualities plus more because Jesus mm -hmm. is way much more than that yeah. um, will definitely help us in our daily lives as well as our relationships so okay what else? I definitely think that whatever it is that you approach in a relationship you definitely have to stop and think and then they sound cliche but what would Jesus do yeah. mm -hmm. that is what we have to you know that's who we're striving to be like that's what we're trying to definitely you know mimic so we have to make sure that the things in our lives, including our relationship, mm -hmm. has, you know, godly qualities in them. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Any more comments on there? No. Yes. <laughs> yes. So at this point, I would like to invite each and every one of you out to our reset session. It's coming up next Saturday at Mount Zion, SDA Church on 2123 Smith Street in Kissimmee. And we have Pastor Aruk. Yeah, Jason that's Rook. Jason Arook that's going to be coming to us live in Kissimmee. You can like on this page if you need additional information. Definitely reach out to any one of us. Okay. You have Yasmin, Simone, Melita, Vera, or any member of our team. And we even have additional information. Uh, in the evening, we have an, a special AY program that's uh, going to be geared towards you and increasing yourself as... Christians and as humans on a whole. So we definitely want to invite each and every one of you to come out and join us and definitely look forward to our next walk that's coming up next month. I'm going to have, hold on. Oh. A question came directly to my text because this was too important. Our listener did not want to let this one pass. At all, they say no. I am not gonna let it go by. They slip, and they were not listening. It says, "Is it okay to lie to your spouse to protect him from something you know that would hurt him?" Ooh, I am very truthful. Like I am blunt, <laughs> so like sometimes things may hurt you, but you just have to let someone know. Like. If you are wearing an ugly outfit, like I will tell you your outfit is ugly. Just some things just has to be known. I guess it's like different for some people in a relationship because you don't know how your partner may react to it. But I would rather know something than find out that you were keeping something from me for such a long time just because you thought my feelings may get hurt or I just rather you be up front. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Yeah. Like, I so for that. me, because I'm very different. And she's very my, honest, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. So, <laughs> my feelings get hurt easily. <laughs> like, I will start to cry. So. Um, so for me, I feel like if you just like pre-warn me, like, okay, I'm about to tell you something. You're gonna cry. This is going to hurt. This could potentially hurt your feelings. Like, kind of like, this easy. Yeah. Don't like, wham, bam, like, in my right, face, and right. I'm really going to be hurt. But like, if you, if you like, you know, like prep me for it, like, okay, Simone, I'm going to tell you something. This may hurt your feelings, but I just want to be honest with you. Can you do I it? I want to know. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, yeah. just ease me into it, and then I feel like I feel much better about it. Yeah. Yes. 
<laughs> yeah, and, and you lie. Yeah, Relationship wise, yeah. whether it's to your spouse, to your significant other, to mm-hmm. your, you know, you're just your friends, your family members, mm-hmm. do you lie is what we want to know <laughs> as far as relationship goes. But Okay, sorry, I have to interrupt. Okay, well, I'm just going to read a question, <laughs> another question, sorry. Yes. So, Gavin Rowe, how important is it to know your, you and your love? I'm reading this wrong. How important is it to know your and your partner's love language? Oh, oh, so very important. important. Yeah. What are because all Because you're showing me love that mm-hmm. is not my love. Yeah. And that is, yeah, like if you think you're giving me like, I know my love language is like quality time. Like I like, I will spend every day with you if I could. Like it's fine with me. Like, yeah. And it doesn't have to be like, <laughs> it doesn't have to be like all day, every day. It could be like for a couple of hours, anything like, even if we're like at the park or if we go to study or something. Anything, Just like, yeah. And it doesn't have to be like cuddling and like, I just like to be like with you, you. Yeah. like just being like in your presence. In your physical presence. So FaceTime will not work. No, like, no, yeah. No? you rather have... I, w- if you can only FaceTime, then I'll, like, take it, but it's not my first choice of, like, hanging out or quality time. So i rather, um, what's it called? I do enjoy quality time, but if you don't like quality time and you're not showing me, like, you want to spend time with me, it's like, why don't you, like, want to be around me type situation? Mm-hmm. All right, so just to recap, the five um, love languages are words of affirmation, um, quality time, receiving gifts, um, acts of service, and physical touch. So for me, I feel like it's extremely important. Um, so um, which one was on me? So as we all know, because I said it about five billion times. Um, so mine would be physical touch. I feel like it's extremely important for your spouse not spouse to spouses, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like the person that you're with um, to know your love language. Like if you love giving gifts, and I have nothing wrong with receiving gifts, but like <laughs> receiving gifts is maybe like number three out of five. Yeah. I, like I will accept your gift. I will appreciate it, but that's not what's filling up my love tank right now. If you hold my hand, that's feel like yeah, you, yeah, that's you hug me. Like that is what makes me feel mm-hmm. good. Like. And if I am over here, like, showering you with gifts, but you like words of affirmation, well, all I'm doing is like, oh, here, babe, um, this is for you because I care about you. But I'm not saying, you know, I really appreciate everything you did for me today. Like, you're really awesome. Like, I love how you, you know, did it. Like, then you're not being filled up either. So right. if we're both on half, like, how can we help each other? You know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah, you're not going to be truly happy. Yeah, mm-hmm. neither one yeah. of them. So, so yeah. I think it's very important that you know that your your significant other's uh, love language. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because there may be someone there that, you know, Uh-oh. your lady takes, or even a man, because oh, men, sure. ladies, <laughs> you like to get compliments. Mm-hmm. But let me tell you, men Boys, love it just as much. Boys. <laughs> Empower <laughs> your man, let your man know. <laughs> You know, if you see Carlos out there with a the fancy curly hair, Alicia, let him know, dude, honey, your hair is looking oh, good. Nice looking and good. Curly, okay? But ladies, just like you want to get complimented, men like it as well. Mm-hmm. And I think it's very important that if your person, whether it's the male or the female, is out there looking good, you need to let them know. Because once they step out, there's going to be other people, another man or another woman out there that's going to compliment. So make sure, the first especially one. if that's what their love language is, that you are definitely telling that person, babe, you look good today. Mm-hmm. So if someone else says it, it's like, oh yeah, my, my, my boo already, my boo already told here. me I look good. Thank you. But if that's the first time, they'll be like, oh, oh thank you. Thank okay. You. Yes. Yes. So be very, very mm-hmm. careful. Yes. yes. Okay, yes. so Sanjay wrote a question. Mm-hmm. He said, when does spending too much time become overbearing? And I don't know how to answer that because it's not overbearing okay, so, for me. All right, so, so, um, you want to answer? No, that's okay, okay. Um, when is spending too much time? I feel like it depends on the couple. Yeah, like, yeah, so, like, just like how you said, like, I could spend all day. If me could spend all day, we should. We, we no. no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a <laughs> 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 Okay, so, um, I'm gonna 
Like it wasn't like that. It's a Christian show. Yeah, it's a Christian show. We do spend a lot of time. Like we sit and we watch shows together. Like we'll sit for hours. Like we enjoy spending time with each other. Like we can. I enjoy spending time with people. So, um, when is it too much? Like again, it just depends on the other person. Like. If my boyfriend likes to spend a lot of time with me and I like to spend a lot of time, then it works out good. But I feel like it gets hard when it's like one person may not like spending a lot of time and one person loves spending a lot of time. So then it, yeah. that's when it becomes hard and you have to try to find a balance. But I feel like a lot of times um, the compromise always leans more on the person who doesn't like to spend a lot of time. Right. Yeah, and it's something that I've seen 10,005 billion hours like, <laughs> of the day. Like it's just, I always just see it happening. So, um, I feel like if if you know that like I like to spend a lot of time with you and you may not like to spend a lot of time, I feel like I feel like it sounds bad. But they need to at least try to make a I feel like so effort, an, yeah, an yeah. extra effort than yeah. more so than I do because that really I feel like for me like that would really hurt me if you mm-hmm. didn't like to spend a lot of time with me. Not that you don't like being with me or spending time with me, but if you know you're always busy or whatever, whatever, like you really have to try to make an effort right. to spend time. So, so Sandra, to time. answer yeah. your question, <laughs> when is it not like too much time, too much? Yeah. When your significant other start acting like they have, a, you know, like a, an allergic it's reaction, reaction. Hey. they start like scratching and just like, you know, <laughs> looking uncomfortable. <laughs> that's when you need to take Back that up. hint. Yeah. Back up just a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Give them their space yeah. because, you know, we all need Everyone that space. Need space. Right. But I feel like when you do give people their space too, sometimes like, you may not even know how to give people their space and they may take it the wrong way like oh like why are you acting different now and stuff like that but it's like i'm just trying Trying to to give you your space so it's it's always like communication yeah yeah. like it's always what i'm gonna put this out there for the married couples that are Mm. listening bathroom time is personal (laughs) time and quiet time you need your space at that point just putting that out there and you know what i ever experienced that kind of stuff so we have some comments so Sanjay he wrote again he's like not overbearing for me and Simone but independence and decompression time is also important yeah. which I do agree like yeah. obviously we can't spend every I mean, single yeah. moment but like if we could then it would be all right but obviously we like have work and school like there is no realistic way that we can mm-hmm. actually spend every day but yeah. you know when you don't have those days I think it should be almost like spent together. Right. So and a balance too. It's not like oh, you could be with me like every day. Like oh yeah, like sometimes you hang out with your friends. Like right. you know, that's what I was gonna say. as long as it's a balance, yeah. not very, like oh, you know, my friends. Very important yeah. that you maintain your friends. Yeah, you have friendships. I'll say you know, don't let all your friendships draw you know fall off mm-hmm. just because you get into this particular yeah, kind of relationship. Yeah. I feel like it's still healthy that you still spend time whether it's you know a, a weekend girls get away or guys guys need it as well yeah. a lot of times women are like oh i'm going to the mall with my friend but if the guy says i'm going to the gym with my buddies it's a problem yeah no they need time just like we need time and i think that that will help, definitely help mm-hmm. so i'm asking at this point does anyone have any last minute questions before we close out this session awesome awesome talk mm-hmm. about relationships i do appreciate the feedback that you guys have been uh putting out there and um again if you have to i want to say lie but not tell the whole truth just make sure or if you're going to say something to someone that's going to hurt i agree with simone let them know in advance listen i have to tell you something and it may hurt your feelings but i need to get it off my chest yeah. because you definitely don't want that to hear too for that person to hear it from someone else. So Zania wrote, how do you ladies feel you are preparing for future marriage relationships? Mm. Very good question. Thought provoking. I feel like with everything, and I don't know if this is right because I've never never been married, but I always like to get like, okay, I don't want to make a decision on my own. Like I feel like that's very important. And like when we talk about like compromise and stuff, like if I want to do something, I want to get your input. We will discuss it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's something that we need to do. I feel like that's mm-hmm. an important step. Like, when you're trying to work towards a marriage or um, 
having the same goals, values, like same things. Like we need to discuss these things. Like um, if we are planning on being married, we need to talk about, okay, this is your goal. This is my goal. How can we work together to, you know what I'm saying? Achieve. Work, yeah, to achieve those goals right. together. How would it be able to work? You know, like you need to- So she wants to know what are you doing like now? What are you doing to prepare mm. yourself for that? What did you say? <laughs> what are you saying? I was making it general too. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. For me, um, I read an article that you have to be the person, oh gosh, I don't know if I can say, mm-hmm. you have to be the person that you're looking for. Mm-hmm. So if yeah. you want all those qualities that we listed, mm-hmm. I have to be that person. Yes. Because I can't say, like, I want a guy with, you know, X, Y, and Z, and I don't mm-hmm. have X, Y, and Z. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I feel like if you are constantly trying to, um, reach your goals, then you would get, I would, you know, hopefully that person would try to reach their goals as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like be that person that that person's looking for, that yeah. you, you're you looking for yourself. Yeah. So I feel like I can't act, look for a guy who has something that I can't give. Right. So that's yeah. what I thought was pretty good. So I look at it as going in, like a lot of times people say, well, you're 50-50. You're not a half a person, you're a whole person. So going into a relationship, you have to go in 100%. Mm-hmm. That person has to come in 100%. So when you put it together, it's magic. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Right? So on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go out and have, Melita is going to close us out in prayer. Mm-hmm. We want to thank you so much for tuning in and hope to see you next week again at Mount Zion SDA 2123 North Smith Street in Kissimmee, Florida. At 1045. Generally, Father, dear God, I thank you for allowing us to have a time that we are able to learn what you want for us, dear God, and spread um, spread your word, dear God, and let us just uh, figure out what we want in a relationship, dear Lord. And I pray that um, as we go into relationships, dear God, I pray that we would take this with us and that we'll spread what um, spread the word, spread what you want for us to have an ideal relationship, dear God. So be with us, protect us, um, be with our listeners and the people who are viewing what viewing us tonight. Dear God, be with them, um, and thank you for an awesome, allowing us to have an awesome worship session here. Amen. Yeah. Until next time. Bye. <laughs>